Welcome everybody to your newest game. What is this game all about? It's a Mario. Look at it, it's a me. Mario has been around for so long and been such a great inspiration for Mario, uh, Donkey Kong, Mario, uh, Super Mario Brothers, all the games. But the game that we're really talking about is, ho, 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 it's a Mario Kart. Uh, what's been great about Mario Kart and why I wanted to be able to put this game together is was inspired by that classic carnival game. You go to the fair, you go to the midway, and you and you play the game where you roll the ball and the ball goes down a little thing and it falls into the three and then your horse moves along three spots and uh i thought hey this would be super fun to be, be able to do that same version but let's have it be luigi let's have it be mario let's have it be daisy yoshi and all the other cast of characters this is a powerpoint only game in which that you're going to basically your kids going to answer questions those questions let them get themselves a fun little spinner and in the end who moves along and kind of uh, who win who can get the most points just like your classic mario kart game folks this is Mario Kart. Hey everybody, yeah, thanks for checking out this tutorial here. This tutorial is going to be super helpful because there's uh, uh, there's a lot that goes on in this one. Um, and it is, a, like I mentioned before, it's a PowerPoint only game. And in order to be able to play this game, uh, we're just going to follow that general as things get uh, hopefully not too complicated, but just uh, let me just understand, give you the premise of the game, which is that uh, I'm going to have students answer a question. If they answer the question correct, then they get to be able to spin um, and uh, basically land on a mushroom, land on a, on a, um, basically do the little spinner and wherever the spinner lands mushroom a shell a bullet that kind of stuff is going to move their cart along the path and so one mushroom moves them one spot and so forth uh shell's going to move you forward but i can knock somebody else off and so basically i'm going to have the students answer a question if they answer a question they get a spin and then they move their cart and then they then we have more kids come up and then we do that all over again. First team that gets to the end gets a certain number of points, and then we move on to another race, or we need to call them another cup. And so this game is going to be uh, played basically on the idea that um, you're going to play for a set number of questions, similar to games like Jeopardy, where I got a five by five grid or something like that. Now within here, you can pick however many that you want. I have a built-in set of 40 questions. Let me jump ahead over here and just show you what the question board looks like. So I have 40 questions on here and I play the play this game in which that um, I'm going to get through a certain number. So there's 40 of them in that 40. Every time um, uh, they answer a question right, they could be able to move or you know throw a banana peel, all that kind of sort of stuff. So it's, you don't know necessarily how fast the race is going to go. So it's going to be based on a set number of questions. And that these questions are about time and the difficulty of the questions. If you get challenging questions, they may not answer. They may not spin very much. If I got really easy questions, then everybody's always going to be answering and such. And then also, too, you can, you can make a decision is the um, you could have six different carts playing and I could make it one person from each team come up and answer a question. Or if I wanted to flip that, I can just make the questions, let's say, make it more challenging. If I have six teams, they could all answer as a group and then show me their show me their answers on their whiteboards uh, that way you'll increase the chances of winning and such so as with all of my games please um customize it to whatever fits best in your particular classroom individual questions group questions instead of one person coming up have two people come up or whatever anyway so let's say if i wanted to be able to not have all these questions like i only want to be able to do uh, i want to get rid of a certain number of those just highlight however many that you want and hit delete and now there's only 32 questions or whatever and, and such so that's the basic uh, premise of questions allow you to do the spinner um here is the as with all of my games i got some basic directions at the very beginning these are the directions you go you go through with your students um, and you can see here you're going to say hey everybody you're going to select your different uh, racers now much like i said with the number of questions i can have you can change the number of questions you can ask also change the number of racers you can't go beyond six six is the most racers that i can have but if i only wanted to be able to go a smaller number i wanted to go to four that's totally doable as well too so the way in which that i'm going to play the game is i'm going to divide the team into six uh six different racers you come up with a way in which that they can choose because people are going to have, I want to be this or I'm going to be that. And so you, you come up with a way in which that who gets to pick which. Um, and then once they answer their question, here is the key that they have to be able to, uh, that you're going to be able to let them know what they move. They land on a mushroom, you move one space. You land on a shell, you move one space. And I get to be able to throw that shell, hypothetically, to another team, which means that they're going to lose their next turn. Um, if I land on a banana peel, that means I don't move at all. I'm stuck. If if I land on a 
uh, the, uh, the star, I'm going to move two places. If I land on the bomb, I'm going to have everybody else is going to lose their next turn. And if I can land on the old bullet, then I'm going to be able to move three spaces. Now, however many of these are, I have, um, um, an appropriate number of each. So there's more mushrooms. There's only one bomb. There's only one bullet and that kind of stuff and such. And so basically they don't need to memorize this. They're all going to have this in front of them. Um, and then in the end, when the first team crossed the finish line of the first cup, you can see they're going to get 10 points and whoever comes in second gets eight points. Whoever comes in third gets six and so forth. If there is a tie, let's say if I had a tie for second place, team one gets 10, team two gets eight. There is no team three because that was a tie. We go to team four and team four will get four points and so forth. Um, and the play continues. Now, uh, let's jump into the game and kind of see what this is like. I've pre-made one here for a language arts class. And much like all of my games, you can see here is I have sound effects and um, music that really kind of emphasize the game. Here's an extra caveat with all of my games. Uh, as you get the game, uh, uh, you're going to see that there's a link for a Google Drive folder for the fonts. Fonts are really essential in this thing. So please uh, download those fonts. I have a video on YouTube about how to install fonts if you don't know how to be able to do that onto your machine. Onto your machine. But really kind of essential to be able to uh, make make this game play correctly. So there's the, the music, the intro, and we're saying, hey, everybody, we're playing language arts. There's your directions. You go through your directions with your kids and so forth and all that. Um, uh, let me put that away. All right. And then here is uh, the standings board. And so the way in which that this is going to work is we have five cups or races in which that we're going to do. Moo Moo Meadows, Coconut Nut Mall, and the others that are there. And so all of the circles themselves will take you directly to that cup. Okay, so if I click on this, we're going to jump over to the Moo Moo Meadows Cup. You're going to continue to come back to here because we want to keep track of our scores. And so the scores on the very bottom is a scoreboard. So if you can see the numbers themselves, so if I click on Mario right here and I click on the number one, and it changes to a two, and there's a sound effect. So th this is a counter that we're going to continue to come back to. You have to be directly on there, so be just be careful with your mouse uh, and where you ultimately put that. You can see I got, hey, you know, That'd be the score. So there's two, 15, 34, and 48. And when I come back to here, those scores will still be standing. And whoever has the largest number at the end of all of our questions is ultimately our winner. And that's how the game ultimately is going to be played. If you forget across the top, let's say if Yoshi comes in first, Yoshi across the top, it says 10 points. So then I could just simply go to there. Now Yoshi gets 10. If Toadette came in second, she gets eight. So I go... Give her eight points there. And then we jump back into the into the next question and, and round. So this is our standings and such. All right. So let me uh, let's uh, that's how the overall scores are going to be kept. Now let's jump into the uh, how is the do I answer questions? We'll play Moo Moo Meadows first. So if I go over to Moo Moo Meadows, it jumps me to our race board. Remember, I mentioned at the beginning, this is the carnival game that does the I, I roll a three and I move, move three spots. So how am I able to be able to move Luigi along the way? is as follows, which is, uh, um, let me show you the gameplay first. If I want to be able to move Luigi, I have the carts across the top and then their faces on the bottom. So the faces on the bottom is how you move the cart. If I want to be able to move Luigi one spot, I click on the very bottom down there, click his face, and it is animated and triggered to be able to move him one. I have numbers on the tracks as well to be able to keep track of how far they need to be able to go. There's 15 spots. When you get to spot number 15, you win. Luigi moved one spot. So if I want to be able to have Mario move two, I click on Mario's face. One, two, and Mario clicks and moves two spots. Let's say uh, Peach moved three. One, two, three, and so forth. Where, however much I click on these characters, they're ultimately going to move. Okay. What makes them move? Well, that's the spinner that you can see right down there. The spinner in the bottom right hand corner is triggered in which that if you click on that question, that little question, that the different one, but anyway, you click on the question and it's going to start spinning and it's going to have that sound effect from Mario Kart that goes along with it. It's moving so fast that you can't really time it. And this is the one that has been, uh, I said, I've, I've changed the amount of them. So there's more mushrooms than others. There's only one bullet and one bomb. How to stop it? You're just going to click the same item box again, the question mark, and it stops it. There's a banana peel. The banana peel means it lands on myself. So if I was Toadette, then I don't move anymore. Move on to the next person. Okay. Now your choice in the game about who does these things. You could be able to have you could have yourself a wireless mouse. Um, 
that you can have the kids be able to do it. You can have it come up to your your device. You can have it if it's a touchscreen. They it, the touchscreen works as well. If you have a touchscreen laptop kind of a thing, hey, there it is, and you move one spot. And so that's basically it. You spin, you land, two spots, and then when you get to the very end. Let's say we got Peach right here, and then when she gets and she lands, hey, anything that goes over, now she moves over. Then this will designate the winner once they cross the finish line. There's a sound effect there, and you can see it says now Peach was in first. So she has won Moo Moo Meadows. We would go back to the standings, and you can see those numbers are still there. So let's say if Peach came in first in Moo Moo Meadows, I'm going to give her 10. She had 44. 34, and now she's got 34. You're going to have to remember on Moo Moo Meadows who, what those places were. If you forget, you can click back on Moo Moo Meadows and be able to get those spots. But I recommend, hey, as soon as somebody comes in first, you write down, hey, who came in first, second, third, fourth, and have yourself a little note card so that when you go back to the standings button, that's the red link in the bottom left-hand corner, it's there, and you can you can um, go back and give them their um, – corresponding numbers or whatever. Um, now, once this is all done, hey, that's great. Uh, let me go back to Moomoo Meadows because instead of just, you know, spin, 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 they got to answer questions. Let's talk about how the questions work. The questions work with the other link in the bottom left-hand corner. If I click on questions, it brings me to these. And this is the one I mentioned before. You decide however many you want to be able to go. You can go in order if you make, you can tell everybody, hey, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, or we can make it random. Your choice. Who's picking? Doesn't matter, but basically these are the questions. And I have color coded them so that you can see that um, if they if they have not, if you have not clicked on it, the link is white. If you've already clicked it, it's kind of uh, faded it away a little bit. I want to be, you see that it's still there. So you can see question number one has been grayed out or bronzed out a little bit to be able to see that it's already gone. You can re-click on them if you need to, but basically this is how it works. I click on question number two and up comes a question. This is just a slide you can do whatever you want with. So you could put text in there and images in there and make a multiple choice, true, false, fill in the blank, short answer, doesn't, whatever you want it to be, you just, this is a space for it. Then I have a text box that is connected to this reveal button. So you read the, uh, the question here, the way I play it, one player from each team comes up, they're on the right board and what is it? All they need to do is write A, B, C, or D on it and hold their boards. They show me all their answers. I got A, B, B, A, whatever kind of a thing. Then by clicking on reveal, Will brings up the answer. Correct answer is A, everybody. Then you need to either remember, write down, indicate one way or another that only the teams that got that question correctly are going to now go and answer that question and be able to have their character move. The back button is going to take them to the standings. It won't take them to their exact race because I don't know which one you're doing. That's why. So I'm in Moo Moo Meadows, but that question too could have gone if we're playing in Bowser's Castle or something like that. You follow me? Anyway, so hey, all those who got it correctly, then we go back to here and we move those characters accordingly. He got two, or then you spin, sorry, and then that. So you answer questions, winner spin, move the carts, do it over. That's that process. Answer a question, winner spin, move the carts. Remember that. That's kind of easy to remember. All right. And so what happens when I'm um, I'm done? You can see the question number two has been grayed out. And we move to the next one. And then, it's, in essence, that's the game. Hey, let's say we finish Moo Moo Meadows. That's great. I can leave it there if you want to as a way to remember. You don't need to do this. But there's the lightning bolt in the left-hand corner. If you just want to remind people which, which races are already gone, you can click on that. And now that's gone. It's not, it's not even linked anymore. So make sure you get all the information you need there. You don't necessarily need to. If you don't like, you can just delete those. But that's a way to be able to remember about... Um, which ones we have left to race. You probably will not get to all of these races. There's five to be able to pick from. There is no difference in any of them besides just the look. So if I click on Coconut Mall, this is just the exact same race, which just themed it to looking like Coconut Mall. And here are the other ones. So you can see them. This was the, the snow base DK Summit. Here is uh, Bowser's Castle. And lastly, I think my favorite looking of all of them is the Mari is the Rainbow Road one and such. All, all exactly the same thing. It starts fresh. Whenever you go to a new race, all your racers are back on the left and you answer questions and move them along. All right. I think that in essence is the game. Let me hop out of there. By the way, if you hop out, you got to be aware. If I go back to my standings, those scores are always there. Theoretically, if you didn't want to keep scores, you can keep them on a whiteboard, but just be conscientious. If you get out of this thing, if I hit escape and get out, everything is reset, all of my animations. So it's 48 to 44 to 15 to 8 to 10 to 2, and when I hit escape, and if I go back into that, everybody, all of those things have been reset. The scores have been reset. If I go back to Moo Moo Meadows, 
all the racers have been reset. So you have to stay within the game if you're going to use the standings, which I recommend. It's really kind of nice to be able to have them in there. So everything should just be done within PowerPoint mode and staying within there. So some, something to take care of. I'm hopping out and showing you basically how to be able to edit and make the game. As you go through here, you can see you just put in questions, multiple choice, choice questions. I can put in fill in the blank kind of questions. I can put in true, false questions. All of it is animated so that they look like this. You just type in your question right here. Who was the first president of the U.S.? And then when it says type in the correct answer on the bottom, you just put, you know, and this thing is all animated to with those things to be able to have the question comes up when you go on number seven, you hit reveal and it comes on up. You click back and it takes you back out of there. So like I said, you decide on how many questions. I have more detailed um, uh, directions in the game. Well, let me get back out of there and show you what that, that looks like. At the very end, those directions at the beginning are just for the students. The directions down here on the bottom are a little bit more for you and more detailed. A lot of what I've covered in here. Let's see if I've missed anything or whatever. All right, let's talk about the print cards. I have another document added onto here. That document is called Mario Print Cards. And the reason that this is a different document, it's not all in one, is that the layout, this is all designed for a, should I have one ahead of time? But this is the size of a piece of paper, these things. And the way that which that uh, this works is that... Um, when I'm playing the game, sometimes I forget who's Team Mario and who's Team Peach. And so what do I do? Well, simply the idea was I'm going to print a piece of paper and it's going to have a picture of Mario on here. And then I'm going to have them fold that piece of paper like that and tape it to their desk. So facing me is Mario. Should have had it done ahead of time. There he is. Here's me. I'm a Mario. Hey, there we go. So now here's my piece of paper facing me. So I can quickly know who's who. Hey, be sure. Hey, you guys go next and that kind of stuff. Uh, on the other side, on this flip side, it's reversed. And that's just a key for them. So they know how many points each thing is because they'll often forget like, hey, how much is a shell or how much is the star versus the bullet? So that way, every team, they have that little key right in front of them. And if you look on my uh, a, a thing right here on the directions, that's how I recommend on a class or cl classroom desk or a table is you give them a piece of tape or whatever, and you put that on there. Easy for you to kind of be able to remember on that. All right. The next directions is the, um, uh, I think I mentioned before about what to do with ties, your decision on ties, um, because you got to be able to, if when we're back on the slide, who goes first is a question that gets brought up if i'm over here back in moo moo meadows and if mario's the first one to go you say mario's right to here mario's on a 13 and peaches all the way over here on 12 now or let's put them on the exact same here look at that all right so now what if um the next roll mario goes first and he gets uh the star that moves him to and peach goes second and she gets a star that moves her to like, but just because Mario went first, does that mean he wins? Your choice. You could have it based that it is whoever is the first to go will win. Or you could have the entire uh, players all go. And then let's say she goes again. So theoretically, do you want to have two winners be first place? You can. You can do that. If that's your choice, just let the players know ahead of time. If not, you got to come up with a way of deciding who goes first in all of this. And it can be everything from rolling a die to who, who gets their answers in fastest kind of a thing. Um, your choice on about, but be, be very aware. One of those questions as always is, is fairness. And the last thing you want to have is that there is who came in first. So, so, so beware to be able to address that. And so that's why I have that on there about making sure necessarily who goes first. Um, and in essence, that's the question. All of the uh, animations and things have all been put in there. So please don't necessarily go in and change. Let's say if you want to be able to make one of, make this thing longer, or I wanted to add more characters, all that's kind of a no. <laughs> Basically it it is what it is. The only thing I want to be able to change and talk about is one thing that you can do, which I think would make it a little bit more fun, is to get rid of the spinner. Why would I want to get rid of the spinner? Well, one of the reasons if I go back to this, when it says Mario print cards, these have all these players. And then I have this. I have printed these out. Sorry, I've made these to fit for a printer in which that if you if you print these out in color, this is the amount that are on the spinner. There's four mushrooms. There's two shells. There's three bananas, there's three stars, there's one bullet and one uh, bomb. This is all the things that are on the spinner. What I like about this is get rid of the digital one. Although this is a digital game, I can't emphasize enough how cool it is to have a real manual um, um, 
tactile things to be able to do. So how about this? Print these things out ahead of time and maybe put them on a cardstock or something like that. And if you even want to, I put this on as a background. If you want to put this on the other side, so when you cut them out, it looks kind of like actual little playing cards. And then you can uh, mix them all up, shuffle them around. Uh, you could print multiples if you want to be able to have a much bigger stack. And basically, all right, Team Mario, your turn. And then they go up and they pull up their card and they go, hey, I didn't have them ahead of time. They go, oh, I got a shell, everybody. And you're like, hey, where's my shell? Like, oh, there it is. Hey, so then that moves. So that just basically changes the idea from a digital um, a digital spinner to a real-life card game. My recommendation is the card. I'll tell you this. The spinner's nice because it's got the cool sound effect and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, that, in essence, is the game. This is one of my newer games. Love to be able to get some feedback. Spent a lot of time working on this one. And would love to be able to hear back from you all about how this thing works and how much your kids enjoyed it. And ultimately, we're able to review the questions and such that you needed to. So that's it. That's Mario Kart. Hope you guys can crush the finish line. As always, love to be able to hear your feedback. And I am... Ryan the Game Show.